Good afternoon and welcome. Today I'd like to share with you a pictorial history of Victor, Colorado and its surrounding area. I hope to pass on a bit of the rich history that came out of the Cripple Creek Mining District. Many of the postcards and photos you see today are from the collection of my friend, friend Linda Irene Teenvit, who runs the CrippleCreekRailroads.com website from her home in Norway. <laughs> Others that you will see are from my Victor Facebook family, and some I've just found online. Uh, before we begin, I'd like to tell you a little bit more about myself. Uh, most often I'm asked when I lived in Victor. Um, the answer is I've never lived in Victor. I was born uh, after my family moved away, and uh, as Doug said, I was born in Grants, New Mexico. This is a photo I took on our 2006 um, trip down to visit with my grandparents. It was a surprise celebration for their anniversary, by the way. They had several family members uh, come in and uh, celebrate, and they didn't know anyone but us were coming. Uh, my grandfather, like Doug said, did work at the Vindicator Mine, and he thought that it no longer existed, that nothing of the surface structures existed. So he was very excited to see all of, um, of the photos that I shared with him at that time. When we got to Victor, I was pleasantly surprised to see that um, my grandparents' house did still stand at the time. <laughs> It's a little emotional for me because this house did burn a few years ago, and it's no longer there. Um, the two pictures in the upper left and lower right were taken um, after they sold the place, uh, but this photo in the upper right is one um, from a collect my grandmother's collection. I'm not sure who took the photo, uh, but uh, their little house is right there behind the Catholic Church. Uh, after we finished on our 2006 um, visit to Victor and uh, the Vindicator Valley Trail, uh, we stopped by the Cripple Creek District Museum, and I met a man named Eric Swanson. He was then the uh, director, and he took us up into the Carlton room upstairs, and he pulled out directories. And I was able to find in the upper left-hand corner that uh, directory. It was the 1915-16 city directory for Independence, Colorado. And my grandfather's mother's family is listed there. And to the right is the mortuary and funeral page for my great-grandmother. Here you see my, my grandfather's uh, brothers and sisters. The little girl on the left is Elizabeth Ann. She was born about 1912. She only lived to be 10 years old. <clears throat> the lower picture is my grandfather Buster on the left and his brother Frank on the right. Mm -hmm. And the one to the far right is my grandfather when he was four years old living in Denver with his aunt and uncle. Uh, Frank lived to be 81 and Buster lived to be 92 years of age. Here are some photos of when my grandfather brought my grandmother to the district, uh, to Goldfield. Uh, they lived at 1 or 1023 <clears throat> Independence Avenue. And uh, in the photograph at the bottom is my grandmother, Emma, my grandfather, George Daniel Buster Peters. <laughs> <laughs> The little baby is their first child. His name was George Daniel Bus Little Buster Peters Jr. He only lived to be seven months old. He's buried out in Sunnyside Cemetery. And then the lady to the right is my grandfather's stepmother. He, my grandfather lost his mother when he was two and a half years old. And she as well is buried in Sunnyside Cemetery. Here are the family photos of them living at 107 Portland Avenue. You can see the church behind my grandfather on the left. My grandmother is on the top right, and if you peek to the side there, you can see my mother in a little chair there. 
And then out in front was Gladys, my mother, and Pepper, who was actually named Paul Eugene Peters, uh, her younger brother. They're all gone now. No, none of them are surviving. And this is Frank's family, Uncle Frank's family. Aunt Margie was a walker, uh, Margie Walker Peters, and she's standing in front of Port, the Portland Avenue home as her son, Ted. Uncle Frank is standing in front of the house in Goldfield, and if you look in the far back, the Catholic Church in Goldfield can be seen. Uh, it no longer exists. These are uh, Carlton Mill photos that my grandfather took as he was helping build the mill from 1949 to 1951. These are my family, my mother, my grandfather, my grandmother, and Uncle Pepper. Uh, this is when they came back from living in Hawaii when my grandfather was working on the tunnel job. That was in 1955. Here are photos from uh, my 2014 visit. We did visit in 2012, but only for a couple of days. Uh, the photo on the left bottom is me uh, at the second Sunnyside Cemetery tour. Uh, I got the opportunity to tell folks about my, um, my great-grandmother, and her headstone is there. And this is just a, one of my favorite photos of the Vindicator that we took that year. Uh, my Facebook page came out of this visit. I got in contact with, with a couple different people and took their information. And um, I would email them photos and then I decided and chat with them on Facebook. And I decided that maybe I needed to start a Facebook page. And so I did, and uh, it's been going since May of 2014, and this morning we have 608 members. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> this is the first photo I'd like to share with you, and I believe this is in the calendar. It's the view of Victor, and featured here in my mind's eye is the, uh, is the building of... Here, let's see, I can't see them. I've got my arrow going here, but you can't really see. Right here below this arrow, that's, that's the rebuilding of the gold coin mine after it burned in the Great Victor Fire of August 21st, 1899. And as you can see, many buildings have been built since then uh, in this picture. So I would date this picture at late 1900 or early 1901. If you look to the right of the gold coin, Here's the gold coin. If you look to the right here below my arrow, that's the gold coin club. It still stands. The, below my arrow here is the gold coin apartments. Here is the Midland Terminal building. It still stands. And this mine here is the Mary Cashin mine. <clears throat> Just recently on my Facebook page, this photo brought a bunch of cheer to my heart because uh, I was told by Anna Conley Horton that this was Victor. Well, as I looked at the picture, it looks like nothing that I know of Victor. Nothing looks familiar. Uh, she did give me a little bit of information. She told me that her uh, granddad's name was David Flanagan and that it was on North 4th Street. So I looked at the Sanborn fire maps and the city directories for uh, Victor around 1900 or so, and I was able to find the exact location. And the reason I didn't know where this was was because these buildings no longer exist. <laughs> and as I walked by this area yesterday, I was able to take a few photos. Some of the foundation, remnant foundations of this building are still on North 4th Street. Her granddad, Anna's granddad, is the uh, older gentleman behind the wheel of the delivery truck on the right. And his sister, let me look here, his sister's the lady in the white apron, and her name is Gertrude. That's correct. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Unfortunately, I can't see all the wording that I put with this presentation, so I'm winging it. Uh, 
You're once, doing a great job. Well, thank you. you. Once I, I got so tickled because once I knew where this was located, I knew where to look. This is a, a round uh, circuit 1900 Detroit publishing company photo, and you can find this online at Wikipedia. It is a public domain photo. And uh, let's see if I can get my... The building is this one right here. I don't know if you can see that arrow. Go slowly with that mouse so we can figure out where the arrow is. Okay, here's the arrow. Oh, okay, good. And I'm going to lower it down, <laughs> and it's right here. It's this building Super. here. But there it is oh, right there. Wow. So it's the one wow. with the white awning. It's um, almost yes. center of the photo right here. It's a really good picture. It is a very good picture, and uh, it you can get, you can download the original, which has a very high resolution. And I zoomed in, oh and I was gosh. able in the right hand photo to read economy market, and that was the name of the market. Thank you. Oh, wow. <laughs> the uh, previous view of Victor that we saw with the rebuilding of the gold coin mine, that photo on the left is a crop of that particular photo. So we already kind of saw it and just didn't know what we were looking at. It's my understanding that that building uh, burned. Anna told me the building burned in 1910. And this is the inside of the building. Oh, wow. And as you see, uh, I, I didn't write anybody's names, but her family is there in the photo uh, behind the counter. And I want to point out, too, anytime I use someone else's photo or a photo I didn't find online, I gave them credit down at the bottom. And this, too, is another interior shot. In the 1902, sense, or 1902 city directory, it lists it as, uh, Ol I believe, Olson and Flanagan, a meat market. So I'm not sure how that plays. Okay, here's another photo from the uh, from the calendar that the Victor Heritage Society put out this year, and uh, this comes from my friend Linda in Norway's collection, and uh, this is how she identifies it. She says, "Here is the trolley on the low line as it neared the big cut north of Anaconda about 1905." <clears throat> Linda describes this view of Trolley number M-105 is heading towards Cripple Creek on the low line after passing Alamo Junction. At the turn of the century, uh, at the turn of the 20th century, there were two trolley lines. Most locals, most people from the district know there was the high line and the low line. This too is one of my favorite shots. Um, it's, it, shows uh, oh, four men racing on horses down Victor Avenue, just past uh, the city hall. Uh, all that makes me really happy, but what really makes me happy is I can identify this photo to being after December of 1905 because the gold coin ore house in the upper left says granite mine, and the granite mining operations uh, purchased all the gold coin operations, or yes, all the gold coin operations. <laughs> this one, this photo is very similar to the one that was in last year's Victor Heritage Society um, calendar. Uh, this one's a little bit more clear, and it is from Linda's collection. But what I truly like about this is you can see the Florence and Cripple Creek uh, Railroad Depot as it appeared in Victor. Would you point that out for me? Okay, and that's going to be the building that's right here, oh, okay. almost center. In the upper left, you can see the Mary Cashin with its huge amount of cribbing. And look at the waste rock behind that cribbing. It's amazing. Uh, I don't know what the building is to the right, but I do know that this building to the left is the uh, Oxford Hotel and Bar. Uh, it, for you, for those of you who have been to Victor, uh, when you go up North Fourth, there's kind of like a triangle in the road. The road goes to the right and goes straight. This used to sit there 
near where that is, a little bit past that. <laughs> so here's where I'm going. I'm not a really good reader, but I'm going to try to read this because I think it's interesting. Uh, my friend Paula Waddington, who's on the Facebook page, contributed this photo to me. And it's the 1913 big snowstorm in Victor, Colorado. And so this is looking south on 3rd Street with the trolley car turning onto Victor Avenue. To the left is the post office block, and to the right is the monarch block, and across the street is the building that now houses the Victor Lowell Thomas Museum. Okay. <clears throat> On December 4th, 1913, newspapers around the state reported one of the greatest snowstorms ever known in December broke over Colorado early this morning with such in intensity as to block traffic in cities, tie up businesses, and compel the closing of public schools. In only one place was the wind reported, and that was at Cripple Creek, where a high blizzard raged with such intensity that only things to be seen in the city streets were the coal wagons. <laughs> On December 6th, it was reported that Cripple Creek was in absolute darkness due to the power plant burning to the ground. Oh, wow. 15 feet of snow covered the district. Oh, wow. 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 Now this, this photo too is in the uh, Victor Heritage Society calendar of this year. And you're looking up North 3rd Street and many of the businesses that, are, that you can see, the buildings still exist. <clears throat> the, let's see, also in the upper left-hand corner, I don't know if you can see where my pointer is here. This is the Dillon Mine. But uh, where it says Smith Paxson, let's see, i got to roll this down. Uh, the Smith Paxson building is now the Victor Trading Company's building, and the Emil Erickson Taylor shop is the German bakery, for those of you familiar with the uh, with Victor. Uh, the building with the lobby sign out front once housed the stove, as well as Zeke's place when Ort Jaeger ran the business. The grocery sign in front out front contains the old bowling alley, and Barrett's Furniture Store was next door. The building on the corner was once the Hackley Hotel and Tompkins Hardware, and now houses the Victor Lowell Thomas Museum. Okay. <laughs> the Dillon Mine can be seen in the upper left-hand uh, photo from uh, Battle Mountain. And if you look in the lower right-hand photo, it, it's towards the top of the photo. Um, and this, too, is a 1913 snowstorm photo. Uh, the house that you see prominent to the picture uh, still exists. Uh, it's my understanding that it's behind a bunch of trees, and also one of the Victor Heritage Society members owns that house. This photo is also in the calendar. It's the bank block, uh, originally built by the the uh, Woods and Woods Investment Company uh, in 19 or in 1899 after the Great Fire. It was said that it opened December 24th, 1899. And here is Victor Avenue. Uh, the building you see on the left is the Tatlow Building. It currently houses the Fragile Edge. The building next on the right is the Victor Mall building, also known as the Boston building. And if you could see the building off to the right, you can see a slight edge of it. That's the Victor Hotel. This photo is also from Anna Conley Horton's collection, and it shows Victor Avenue. And it looks like some of the snow has <coughs> subsided. Subsided. Uh, seen here are 
313, or 313, 311, and 309 Victor Avenue. One of my new Facebook uh, members, Brenda Sellers, uh, said her family lived in Victor in the 1920s. They came to uh, work and live with her family members, the Creech family. And uh, for those of you who are familiar with Victor Avenue, uh, if you're looking across the street from the photo that we see here, where the actually where the family's standing, it's the uh, the building that they had the business in is the little building to the left of the alleyway that's now a one-story building. And uh, Brenda's <coughs> grandmother is the is the uh, little girl at the, on the left with the curls. And here's, a, here's another photo. Uh, you can see the bank block through the Antlers building window. Uh, and you can see Barrett's furniture across the street. I'm going to back up one and show. Uh, there's also the red and white grocery. Uh, later on, Anna Conley uh, Horton's uh, granddad also ran that grocery store. OK. This is another one of Brenda Seller's uh, photos. Uh, the Monarch Building is to the left. Uh, the post office block is what it was originally called, where the mining operations are now housed, uh, is across the street. And I can date this photo after 1920 because down past the post office block, the opera house no longer stands. Getting back to Brenda's family, this is the little building that's on Victor Avenue that's now one story to the left of the alleyway. And this is what it looked like when her uh, family came and helped and worked in the district. I believe, uh, let's see, I believe there was a sandwich shop on the right. The Creeches owned a sandwich shop on the right and a watch repair store on the left of that building. Okay, we're all familiar with this one. This is the Elks Lodge, the Elks home. Uh, the Elks actually, Victor Elks Lodge actually uh, moved to this location uh, after 1913, and they are Lodge 367. Prior to this, uh, to the 1913 date, the Elks met at 410 and 412 Victor Avenue on the second floor. Uh, and this particular building uh, was called the Armory Building. And it housed a roller skating rink on the first floor and a dance hall on the second floor in the 1909 Sanborn Fire insurance maps. And in 1900, uh, it lists a hardware store and a mining supply store uh, at this location. This is where the uh, Elks met prior to the 1913. This stood by the uh, Victor Mall building uh, to the right of it. It no longer exists. Here, uh, this was another exciting photo for the Facebook page because first we had to figure out where we thought it was. Well, Linda is really good. She, she knows a lot of her stuff and she identified this as the uh, armory or the Elks Lodge building. Mm -hmm. And like I said, it ha housed a roller rink down below. Uh, but if you'll notice in this picture, uh, <coughs> the windows are blown out. Yeah. <laughs> so let me see if I can read a little bit about this. On um, coloradohistoricnewspapers.com for anybody interested, I found that the granite mine explosion uh, <laughs> happened uh, in 1911. And I'm going to read a little bit here. So bear with me. An, an explosion of several hundred pounds of dynamite in the thawing room of the granite mine, granite mine on Battle Mountain early this morning wrecked the mining buildings. Shattered windows in buildings half a mile distant and did damage estimated of between $25,000 and $30,000. In today's terms, that's between $650,000 and $750,000. Another newspaper reported that the, 
explosion, explosion broke practically every plate glass window in the stores in Victor and shattered window panes in the houses as well. <coughs> and here is from Paula Waddington's collection a, a view of what it looked, what the granite mine looked like. Mm. Uh, the three smokestacks that you see there in the head frame, those are from the Portland mine, the Portland number one. It still stands, at least right now, <laughs> today. Okay, and here is the 1900 building, the Tompkins Hardware Supply. Most of us who are familiar with uh, Victor remember it as being uh, in the historical photos in what now is the Victor Lowell Thomas Museum. But before that, it was actually in the Armory building. Okay, so here we have a parade on Victor Avenue. I believe this one is also in the calendar for this year. And you see the uh, Boston building or the Victor Mall building to your left. Uh, and if you look past the gentleman in the fire engine, you can see the two buildings that were torn down later on. Also, we have the low-line trolley tracks to your left. And so this dates this photo to being prior to about 1922. I believe that's when the tracks were uh, pulled up. I, the trolleys ran through about 1919, uh, I think. I can't remember if this one's in the calendar, but again, you can see the Tatlow building, the Boston, uh, the Boston building, which is the Victor Mall, and you can see Victor Avenue on the right. I don't have any more information. I just thought it was very whimsical. Mm -hmm. Here we have a 19, 1909 uh, photo of the Victor High School. And this one is done by a photographer by the name of Heilman. This is one of my favorite photos of all. Uh, many people do a picture here. Many of the photographers of the time did a picture here of Victor Avenue. And this one, I think, is from about the late <coughs> 20s to the early 30s. And I really don't have any more about it other than what is written on the postcard. A lot of us have seen this Heilman uh, postcard of Victor. And I viewed this many a time. And I really never analyzed it too terribly much until recently. Uh, here is the left-hand portion of that postcard. And if you can see my pointer here, right below, this is Garfield School. And if you need help seeing it, it's in the center and up to the right a little bit. Can you bring the pointer all the way up and then we can follow it down? Yeah, right? Can you see oh, it? Oh, yes, yes. yes. It's straight oh. down Maybe. right here. Oh, okay. okay. With, the, with the steeple, the little steeple? Uh -huh. <clears throat> that's a school? That is Garfield School. That's the, stole, that, that's the school that Lowell Thomas went to. Uh, Lowell Thomas, when he was eight years old, uh, came to Victor. His father had a, a uh, doctor's practice in Victor, and they came in 1900, and that's the school he attended. And I read he was supposed to be uh, in the third grade when they first arrived here, but the third grade was full, so they, put, they placed him in the fourth grade. So he was always the youngest child in his class. Okay, and I'm going to try it. Here's my pointer, if you can see it. Mm -hmm. and, oh, oh, okay. Okay, now I'm going to go straight down. Okay. And this is Second Street, and that's the Presbyterian Church. Okay. And to the right of that, some of you may recognize the Washington School. Sure, it's going to go here, and it's going to go straight down here. Washington School. It stood at the corner of Portland Avenue and 2nd Sec Street. <clears throat> and across the street from that is the Catholic Church. That's I say I don't say St. Victor's. I always say the Catholic Church because that's what my grandparents referred to it as. We live behind the Catholic Church. And if you look 
down and to the left, you can see the roof of their Portland Avenue home. And then also to the right is the uh, Victor High School, which is now a soccer camp. Here's my pointer, and I'm going to go straight down to here. Okay. It's the, it's the big building and the lower right-hand portion. Oh, the brick one. Mm -hmm. The brick build, it's, it looks like it's three stories. <clears throat> and then this is the same postcard we were looking at, but this time the center portion has uh, the Victor High School and the towards the lower left. <clears throat> and then you see Victor Avenue, little right to the center. And the big building here, let's, here's my pointer. This big building here is the Opera House. And that location is where the uh, current Victor Information Center is. It's about in that same area. Now this is the right-hand side of that postcard. Again, you see the Victor Avenue to the left. The main focus here is uh, the gold coin mine, but I can see on the shaft house there's writing, so I know that this is after 1905. It's uh, the it says granite mine on the shaft house. Um, this picture is interesting because let's see if I can. It's going to be hard because my pointer is not going to go to the right place. Okay, I have my pointer down here in the bottom right hand corner. You see it? No. no. <laughs> Straight up and right there. That is is the Florence and Cripple Creek Railroad Depot. Oh, it's the little white building to the far right at the bottom. Okay, <clears throat> Linda Irene Tingvit bought this card from a man in Tacoma, Washington. And how I know she bought this postcard from him is it got sent to my house first before I sent it on to Norway. And so I got to get a look at it first. <clears throat> I don't know the year of this. I know it's after 1902 because the Catholic Church is standing to the left. And if you could view straight through the school... Um, that would be where my grandparents' house was. And if you see out front, it says Washington School. There's a big plaque on the building that says Washington School. That actually is in the Victor Lowell Thomas Museum. I got to see that the last time I was in town. Okay, this, I told you, was the Presbyterian Church, uh, and it was on 2nd Street in that bigger photo that I showed. According to the building survey for Victor 1998, this building was moved to SEMA, Colorado. Wow. Wow. And here is a group of children in front of the same church. Uh, I'm not sure if they had vi vacation Bible school back then or not. I don't know what the occasion is. There was no information other than it was the Presbyterian Church. Is that on the Facebook page? This is on the Facebook page. Okay. For those members that are here that are on the Facebook page, uh, you can always search if you go to the top of the page where it lists the name of the Facebook page. It says search. If you click into that and type in Presbyterian Church, it should bring up several posts, and this will be one of them. And this is the Midland Terminal Depot. And after 1905, this was also not only used for the Midland Terminal, but also for the uh, Short Line or the Colorado Springs and Cripple Creek Railroad. Uh, I believe the head frame that you see to the left, just out of sight, is the Mary Cashin Mine. And Unfortunately, I don't have a date on this other than the postcard itself said Union Depot, so that places it after 1905. Okay, this photo, some of you may have seen this on the uh, 
calendar, the Victor Heritage Society calendar for this year. Uh, Jody Wells posted it to my Facebook page along with the back side of the photo which lists all the miners. We don't know what mine it is, but we like to think that it's the Vindicator mine uh, because along with her relatives in this photo, two of my grandfathers, and my grandfather was my maternal grandfather, two of his paternal uncles are in this, identified in this photo. And let's see if we can, this, this should be interesting. Can you see this gentleman here? Mm -hmm. This is Charles Dio Pat Peters. And this is his brother, let's see, where's my, I've lost it, here we go. And up to his right, this is John Peters, John Jacob Peters. And John Jacob Peters was, uh, in the 1940s census, a patient at the Teller County Hospital. Uh, that's where I, when I was doing family res research, that's where I found him. But uh, for their World War I draft registration cards, um, they were both working for the Vindicator Mine. This is a 19, uh, after 1935, I believe, photo. And uh, in the World War II, to draft registration for Pat Peters, he also lists the Vindicator as being his, and that was from 1942. So I believe that that would, in my mind, places that at the Vindicator. And I just like this photo, so I wanted to include this. I, again, don't know if this one is in the calendar. I can't remember, but this is the Ajax mine in, in 1942. Look at all the buildings. Those. All, all aren't there now. Some of them, but not all. Okay, this is one of my favorite photos from um, Independence. What you see in the foreground is Independence, and we believe this, this road down towards the center bottom, going off to the right, is Montgomery. Uh, you can see the white schoolhouse below my pointer right here. Where you drop too fast? It's the, it's, the, it's the big white one about in the middle. And right above it is my favorite, the Vindicator shaft number one. That's where my grandfather worked. You can, if you take the hike on the Vindicator Valley Trail, you can still see the head frame and you can still see the ore house. And off to the right of the school and down below, this is shaft house number two for the Vindicator. Uh, until I saw this postcard, which again came to me first, and then went on to Linda, <laughs> uh, I had never seen this photo. I had never seen all the uh, buildings like this in Independence up close. You see farther away photos, but nothing actually in Independence. This is one of my favorite Goldfield photos. I know Goldfield isn't Victor, but it's a surrounding area, so I like to uh, include this. You can see the city hall and the firehouse here that stands today. I, I love the sidewalks. The sidewalks are my favorite. I don't know what this parade is. We don't have a date on this photo either. But if you look over here to the right, this is the Catholic church that was in the photo where Uncle Frank was standing out in the front yard of my grandparents' house. You can see it in the distance. Again, it no longer stands. This is the uh, train depot in Goldfield. And again, this is Linda's photo. And according to the back side of this photo, this is possibly Jesse and Lou Brookshire posing in front of the depot. And the, the depot uh, served the high line trolley system, as well as the short line or Colorado Springs and Cripple Creek Railroad. This photo to the bottom left was found in, in the Portland Avenue house of my grandparents when they moved into it in 1940. Uh, I really didn't have any information on it, uh, but a gentleman on another Facebook provided the following. The, Cripple, or the Colorado Springs and Cripple Creek Depot in Goldfield at mile post one, oh, excuse me, mile post 10.2 on the High Line Electric District. 
The, the photographer is standing on North Street, the railway crossing looking north towards Gold Cliff and Victor Pass. <coughs> Victor Avenue and Goldfield is behind the station. So this would put it in the inset photo. Uh, here is the city hall and the fire station. And where I've circled is actually the back side of this building. I'm going to go back to this photo. See how it's actually, it looks like it's two buildings put together. Mm -hmm. And then when you go to this photo in the upper right hand corner, you can actually see the back side. Mm -hmm. And again, that was a big mystery on the Facebook page that we solved. <laughs> the next thing I'd like to talk about is Bill Lear. And here, uh, he's Victor's own son. I don't know if any of you know about Bill Lear, but uh, he was uh, a great photographer, and he preserved a lot of photos of the area as postcards. And in the upper right photo, he's shown with uh, French Blanche, and I'm going to say Lacroix. And she's buried out at Sunnyside Cemetery, and they're standing in front of the Grand View Saloon at Midway. <coughs> Now this is, this is, I think, my very first uh, Lear postcard I ever won. It was featured in one of the uh, Victor Heritage Society's uh, calendars. And I'm going to, this is North Forth to the left and Victor Avenue on the bottom. And I'm going to move in because I'd like to tell you a little bit about it. The Monte Carlo uh, bar sign is the bar sign you see there on the uh, bank building or the Victor Hotel. And then the uh, past that is the H.H. Rosser's Pool Hall. And it's signed, I got to see it the other night at uh, the Brass Ass. I got to go in and take a picture of it, so that's marking it off my <laughs> wish list. Um, and. To the left of that is the Miner, Miners Union Hall, and housed there is uh, a theater, was a theater at one time. At one time it was called the Isis Theater, another time it was called the Ivy Theater. And here, this postcard is not very clear, but it says Ivy Theater. This is the, I grabbed this off of the web. <laughs> And here is a photo, a postcard that, that Linda uh, won recently. It's not a Lear postcard, but it also shows the same buildings. And we're going to zoom in. And if you, I, I didn't do a cropped version of it, but below, let's see, where's my pointer? I can see it on my screen, but I can't see it. Oh, it's very light. Below here, it says, uh, Isis Theater, 10 cents on the Miners Union Hall. <coughs> this is another North Forth uh, photo, and it's also a Lear photo. And to the left is the Mint Bar. And if you can see all the way down North Forth, there's a white house with, an, with arched windows. That house still stands. Uh, you have to look at it through... Um, some trees. Okay, so here's Bill Lear's version of that Victor Avenue photo. Uh, again, I'm not sure what dates are on these. Many of them didn't have dates. Uh, but according to his World War I draft re registration card, Bill worked at the Granite mine, Mining Company at the Dillon Mine. And if you remember the Dillon Mine we saw up on Battle Mountain before. Uh, and in the 1930 census, it indicated that Bill served as the Victor's city marshal. And also, in, on his World War I draft registration, uh, it listed him not as Bill, how I knew him, but as Willie. Now here, he's recreating a Heilman photo for this postcard. And what I find interesting on this postcard, and you can't really see it because it's not very clear, but there's handwriting on it identifying each of the mines. And I'm going to put my pointer straight down here below this. It says coin for the gold coin mine. And I can make out the Portland mine here. And I see below my 
pointer to strong. Uh, and then I think this, the pointer's right here. You see it? <laughs> Below the zero is the independence. And way high, I'm going to put my pointer here. This, it, it, this is the Portland 2. Here's that school we saw earlier, the Garfield School, that I said uh, uh, Lowell Thomas went to. Uh, in the 1900 Sanborn fire maps, it was listed as the West Side Public Schools, but by the 1909 fire maps, it was called Garfield. And in her book, uh, Gold Camp Indian Summer, Margaret Whitehall, or what, excuse me, Margaret Whitehill Geddes writes about her husband Ken Geddes' time as a superintendent of schools in the district. She describes, and I have to roll down, sorry, folks. She des describes remaining schools as follows. In school district number one in 1928, there were two schools in Cripple Creek, the high school and the Golden Grade School on corner of Fourth and Golden. Three in Victor, the high school on the east end of Victor Avenue, the Garfield School on 5th and Spicer, and the Washington School on 2nd and Portland. Uh, she did talk about uh, how they, the Washington School was uh, abandoned. Well, it was not being used. It was basically abandoned. But because it was in better shape than the Garfield School, they tore the Garfield School down, and I'm, I am assuming it was in the early 1930s. I've also been told, and I have not gone there yet myself, uh, that you can also see remnants of, of the bottom of this building as well. And here is uh, a photo of Anna Conley Horton's uh, family. It's a Garfield School photo from the early 1900s when Lowell Thomas went to the school. In this photo, Anna's great aunt Margie Flanagan is in the second row, second from the last. And <coughs> now this is a Lear photo. I Stole this from eBay. I don't own it. <laughs> That's where I steal a lot of my photos. Um, it's North Fourth, uh, and the buildings to your left are still standing. Uh, the one-story building is now a two-story building. Uh, and also, if you look high, you can see the Portland. I believe. Let me look. Portland number two. And uh, the ore house below that, where's my pointer? Okay, here's the Portland number two, and the ore house right below is from the Dillon mine, which also was a part of the uh, granite mining operations. Here's Victor <coughs> Avenue. I wish I knew, I stole this one too. I wish I knew more about it. I don't know what the sign says beyond Euro. Uh, <coughs> But here was a crop that they had on eBay, and you can see the Victor Cafe and the Victor Drug on the corner of uh, 3rd and Victor Avenue in the Monarch Building. Here's North Fourth, taken by, again, Bill Lear. And if you look on the right-hand side, uh, what I find interesting is you can see a lot more buildings standing than stand today. Uh, let's see. I, there's nothing else. <laughs> Here, this was featured on the cover of, I believe, last year's Victor <coughs> Heritage Society calendar, and this is also a Bill Lear photo of the City Hall. Uh, I often wished I knew who the gentlemen were standing out front. I'd like to know their story, but I, I love this image. Uh, what I find most interesting is today there is a sign advertising Victor telling people, the tourists, about Victor. And in this photo, it actually says mobile oil to the right. Uh, so it was an advertisement. I don't know what the one to the, uh, the one on the left says mobile oil here. Uh, but I'm not sure what this one is. Now this, uh, this building stood 
beside the Victor Hotel, there's, uh, I can't remember the name of it, the, it's the 1899 Saloon is there right now. But that building has been built and rebuilt over time. And what I find interesting, in the lower right-hand corner, there's a signature that says Lear, but it isn't Bill Lear's usual signature. So I have to wonder if he didn't have a, a father or maybe an uncle who also uh, took photos. But this is called the, the uh, Powell Williams Store. And there in the front, on the left-hand side, it, it's advertising Stetson hats. This is a cute little photo. This is the sweet, it's identified as the Swedish church, but it's the sweet, I call it the Swedish Lutheran church. Uh, it does not appear in the uh, 1900 Sanborn fire maps. Uh, it wasn't until 1908 that it shows them. Um, let's see. Linda let me know that, again, this is her photograph, her little numbers up in the upper right-hand corner. Uh, the ore chute in the far, to the far right that's peeking out in the cribbing wall is part of the mining operations done by the Rexall Gold Mining Company, which was part of the Spicer plant. And the building to the far left in the uh, fire, the Sanborn fire maps is listed as a dwelling, most likely an apartment building at the time. This is a uh, Bill Air photo of the business section of Victor. And uh, there's a lot to see. I'm, I'm not going to try to point it all out, but. Some of, some of the structures here still stand, others do not. What is the building directly across the street from the city hall? Uh, I would have to tell you the name of it. It used to be, it was a wooden building. Anybody chime in that wants to? Overins. <laughs> yes. Overins. Mr. and Mrs. Overin lived up there. <laughs> And here from Battle Mountain, we, we're looking down on Victor. And here we're seeing Goldfield again. And the prominent building featured is the Goldfield School. It was torn down about the same time, early 1930s, as um, the Garfield School. And Linda describes this photo as up on Victor Pass in the background is seen still standing structures of the old Taylor and Brunton sampler. So that would be, let's see, where am I? Up below this area here. Uh, the town of Goldfield is seen in all its glory from the church near the right hand side along what is known as Victor Avenue to the dumps of the Golden Cycle Mine on the left-hand side and the huge structure making up the Jefferson School in the foreground left with its huge, high, and wide roof and massive chimneys. Independence Avenue is seen running up the valley towards Victor ba Pass behind the school. If you have a chance and you can go online, uh, CripplecreekRailroads.com, she has a ton of photos and you can learn so much and if I don't know something she'll definitely know it <laughs> and here here are two postcards uh, sold to tourists that show uh, the various district ore samples uh, I don't ever get in on the bidding for these eBay photos because some of them go into the hundreds not necessarily these but but uh, they, they get very pricey <laughs> Like I said, I was excited I, I got that one. <laughs> and here is Underground in Victor, Colorado. Not sure of the mine. It's not identified on the postcard. And here are, so they're sorting the gold ore in Victor, Colorado. Again, no indication on the postcard of what the mine is. This is night shift at the Portland mine. Excuse me, Portland mine. And it's very Faint, but in the lower left-hand corner is that strange, almost cursive Lear signature. So I don't believe 
uh, Bill Lear took this photo, but a family member did. Uh, so what we're seeing here is the Portland Mill. At this time of the photograph, it was the Portland Mill. It was originally built as the Independence Mill. If you look to the far right of the photograph here, that's the Independence head frame. And this is a Bill Lear photo. Uh, here, again, is another Bill Lear photo. I'm going to put my cursor here. Below here, you can see it in the left-hand side, is the Independence head frame, and it's enclosed here. So this is an earlier version. And we have Portland number one here, Portland number two. And I had the pleasure yesterday of walking uh, the Independence Mill and Battle Mountain Trail. And what you see today are basically the ruins of the mill. There is an amphitheater there. I remember And here, to make it as easy as I could for my Facebook family and for me, because I have to get it right in my mind's eye, this is another Bill Lear photo uh, postcard. And it shows the independence on the left is uncovered at this time. The, the head frame is uncovered. Uh, then the Portland number one. And then, unfortunately, the Portland number two is out of focus. <laughs> Paula Waddington in her collection has the photo of the Portland number two. And I do not have a date on this one. And I don't have an author, I mean, not an author, a photographer. But I really think this is a, a neat photo. I've never, I've never seen it until she posted it on the Facebook page. Now, this is my grandfather sitting out front of 1023 Independence Avenue in Goldfield eating watermelon. <laughs> and if, if you look right above his head and to the left a little bit, you can see the Portland number two. We're moving on to uh, another photographer. We'll go back to Bill Lear here in a moment. But this is Julia Scolis's version of the Portland number one and number two. She's one of my one of my favorite photographers of the district. Here's underground at the Dexter Mine, located on the southwestern slope of Bull Hill. In 1906, the shaft, shaft depth was described as 560 feet with three shafts abandoned. By 1913, it was 1,100 1, feet deep. And by 1922, the Dexter mine shaft was at the 1,300 foot level. Here is the uh, strong mine that you can see still today. And this is a Lear photo. And I want you to notice a couple of things. To the right, the head frame is not covered. And at the bottom, I see three railroad tracks, the Midland Terminal railroad tracks. This is a photo of the Strong Mine uh, prior to that. And as you can see, the head frame is enclosed. And the tracks, there's five sets of tracks. So the Florence and, and Cribble Creek tracks are there as well. Here's the Clyde Mine with my favorite, the Vindicator in the background. <laughs> I thought this one was interesting. Uh, it's also a Bill Lear photo. I love the little guy standing on the building to the left. <laughs> oh, uh, did you see that? <laughs> now here is another view of the Clyde Mine. And in the background, you can see the last dollar mine. mine. I like this photo. It was a Facebook, not Facebook, it was an eBay uh, offering. And I mostly liked it because it has the Clyde Mine, and you can see the, hand, or the writing on the building past the gentleman. So in this photo is the self-proclaimed self last surviving member of Kit Carson's scouts, Colonel Dick Rutledge, as he toured around Colorado giving uh, speeches in the 1920s. His personal friend and photographer H. E. High captured Rutledge posing in front of the Clyde Mine in 1929. 
Uh, while researching Colonel Rutledge, I found more than likely he was a fraud. <laughs> Author Mark Simmons detailed some of Rutledge's claims from being on close terms with Buffalo Bill, Calamity Jane, Jesse James, and Wild Bill Pickock to being recruited by Sheriff Pat Garrett to hunt down Billy the Kid. <laughs> <laughs> and Rutledge's biggest whopper, according to Simmons, was his association with Kit Carson. The colonel was so convincing that when Blanche Grant was compiling Kit Carson's memoirs, she included three photos of Colonel Rutledge. And here is a close-up of that same photo. And again, I like it because I can see the Clyde mine. I'm always looking for the mines, I guess. Okay, here we have uh, one of the photos that Bill Lear took of the Crescent Mine. It no longer exists. Another angle of the Crescent Mine. And here's the granite mine. Remember we uh, heard about the explosion. Well, this 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 is what existed. The mines in the end of family. This is this is the mine as it existed after that big explosion. Okay, so here I found this interesting. I don't have much information on it other than Victor won four to two against Concrete. I'm not sure who that is. It's a it's a baseball game, obviously. Um, but I'd like to give a little history that dates prior to when this photo was taken because I, I found it interesting. Uh, I wanted people to know how Victor celebrated holidays. They always did it in big fashion. So on July, a newspaper article reads, on July 4th, 1902, a number of Victorites spent yesterday at Skagway and celebrated the 4th. In the afternoon, there was a baseball game between the employees of the Pikes Peak Power Company in Victor and the employees at the dam and power plant. The game was played with much spirit and was won by the Victor boys, the score being 12 to 8. The wildflowers in this section were abundant and the ladies in the party passed a very pleasant day. Although the weather was cold, there was a large attendance at the band concert at the corner of 4th Street and Victor Avenue. There were 10 sections upon the program, and after the concert, dancing was enjoyed at the Gold Coin Club. So they always did it up. Okay, and here, again, I, I want to think it's some type of holiday because they're having the hand drilling contest like they still do at Gold Rush days. Uh, I'm not sure I'd want to be the, the guy holding the little spot at the bottom. Right yeah. And here is another, uh, maybe taken at the same time. And in this photo, uh, we're facing somewhat west, and the, the mining head frame that you see to the left, that is the Jefferson Mine. And in the background, if you read, it almost looks like it's on the high school, but it's actually in front of the uh, Victor Ironworks, and then, of course, the Victor... Uh, high school in the back. And that was the last Bill Lear photo I have. Um, my friend Paula Waddington has a little scrapbook, and in this scrapbook collection uh, were photos of the Golconda mine in Victor. And we don't know who the people are with the little dog, but we, we want to think maybe it was uh, people visiting the owners of the Golconda mine or the owners themselves. And I'd like to give you an idea where that was located in Victor. Uh, so this uh, photograph comes from Lowell Thomas's collection that you can find online. And you can see the Midland Terminal tracks uh, <clears throat> there in, in the foreground. And you can see Victor Avenue. And if you look off to the far right, you can see the tailings pile of the Golconda mine. So that kind of gives you an idea where that was located. <clears throat> Also, we're back to that uh, circa 1900 Detroit publishing photo that I found uh, Anna's relative's <laughs> business in. But also, it's such a high resolution that you can do a crop, and there I found the Golconda mine. 
in this photo as well. So just when you think you've seen everything in a photo, you see more. And this is also from the same collection. And I believe, uh, I'm not 100% sure, but it's been described as the Midland Terminal Road, road Cut above Victor. And I just love how the people are up posing. Yeah. <laughs> hey, just climb up there and I'll take a picture. Yeah. <laughs> and this is 17 or 714 Victor Avenue, a uh, home built around 1900 by the wife of the gold condo mine owner. And it still stands today and is featured on the Victor Heritage Society's website. And the picture they have is this photo. And the overhead trolley line for the low line system appears above the people posing on 7th Street. And you can see the mining operations off to the right. And this, I'm just going to go quickly. The Santa Rita Mine near Victor. This is an Andrew James Carlin photo. And there's Santa Rita near Victor. Again, Paula's photo. And then there's Julia Skolish. She uh, was a female photographer, and she even went down in the mines <laughs> to, to do photography. And I, I think I'm being stopped there. Is that right, Doug? No, I'm just trying to get a little airflow. Oh, a little airflow? <laughs> okay, so I'll show you a couple more of her photos. And we're, we're like five photos from the end. Okay. Uh, so this is her version of the Ajax mine. And when I posted this to Facebook, a, people, a lot of people said, that's not the Ajax. The Ajax is, the head frame is below the sm smokestack billowing, billowing out the black smoke. And off to our left is the Colburn Mill. And so this looks a lot different than what we see today. Uh, you can see a lot of, you can see Portland number two up above and several other head frames, but I'm not quite sure what they are at this point. <laughs> it gets really confusing because there were more mines up on Battle Mountain than we even know. <laughs> and here's that same postcard. I'll show you the black, black and white version. And this is the colored version. This was the wow. first version I was introduced to. And you can kind of see the appeal. It's, it's, if you can say a mining photo is beautiful, it, it's beautiful. <laughs> it shows a lot of detail. It does. And here, uh, Julia Scolis is uh, photographing Poverty Gulch. And that these, most of the photos I've shown you today are actual postcards. Uh, and here is the colorized version, not quite as impressive. And this is the colorized version of the Portland number one and number two uh, mines that we saw earlier. And that's actually the last frame. That's right.